red silk curtains were only opened a small slit. But in his position, Shirlian was the only one who could make out the person behind the curtain, since he had blocked everyone else's vision in the hall. Not that they would dare to sneak a peek anyway. That left eye watched Shirlian, and Shirlian returned the gaze subconsciously drawn to it. Hua Chang's appearance this time around didn't only seem to look a couple of years older, but he had also grown taller. Before, when Shirlian looked at him, he could still manage to maintain the same level of eye contact. But now, he had to strain his neck to look up. After staring at each other for a good while, Hua Chang finally broke the silence. He said in a deep voice, Would you like to bet on the highest or the lowest? It was this deep voice, one that was pleasant to the ear, that pulled Shirlian back to reality. Whether it was betting on the highest or the lowest, there was no difference, so he answered right away, Highest. Hua Chang replied, Fine, then I'll go first. Shirlian's left hand supported the base of the black gambling cup. His right hand covered the circular lid. Hua Chang stood in front of him. With his right hand covering Shirlian's left, he guided him to shake lightly before lifting the lid. There were two dice at the bottom of the cup, a six and a five. From all the way above, Lung Chan Cho, with his vision like a hawk's, saw how easily the high roll took place and his eyes widened. How did that happen? Hua Chang gently shifted his hand and beckoned Shirlian to give it another go. Shake it like this, he said. Now you try it. Shirlian mirrored his actions and shook the cup twice. But Hua Chang said, No, not like that. Even though he was reprimanding Shirlian, his voice was exceptionally gentle and patient. As he explained, Hua Chang supported Shirlian's hand with his own again. But this time, his left hand found its way to Shirlian's right hand, the one that was covering the lid. He instructed softly, like this. And just like that, the back of Shirlian's hands were enveloped within Hua Chang's palms. When skin touched skin, Hua Chang's hands felt temperate like jade. The exquisite silver van braces that Hua Chang wore were cold as ice, and yet Hua Chang's movements were careful, and he never allowed them to come into contact with Shirlian's skin. His hands guided Shirlian's and shook the black wooden gambling cup in a rhythm that was neither hurried nor slow. Once, twice, thrice. The sound of the two dice colliding with each other as they bounced inside the cup was crisp. Even though the shakes were gentle, Shirlian could feel waves of numbness from the back's of his hands, traveling along his arm and spreading to the rest of his body. As he was shaking, Shirlian lifted his eyes to sneak a peek at the other person and realized that Hua Chang wasn't looking at the gambling cup at all. Instead, he was watching Shirlian intently, with the corners of his mouth curved up. Shirlian couldn't help but return the fond smile but immediately controlled himself when he remembered the crowd of ghosts that were watching him from above and below. He lowered his head and diligently studied the gesture that Hua Chang showed him. Like this, he asked. Hua Chang widened his smile. Hmm, that's right, just like that. Seeing how Shirlian shook the cup a few more times, full of hope, he suggested. Why don't you take a look? 
Shirley lifted the lid and saw two white dice at the base. It was two threes. Rolling two threes was already considered an impossible feat. It was as if a gentle spring wind had blown past Shirley's heart and he thought, could it be that I finally learned the trick? However, even though it was shocking, six points was still slightly less than 11 points. He cleared his throat and admitted, I'm sorry, I've lost. But Hua Cheng replied, don't worry, this round doesn't count. Right now, I'm teaching you. Try it again. Hearing him say this, even Lang Chan Cho and Shi Ching Xuan were tongue-tied. The crowd of ghosts in the hall stared with their mouths gaping open. Then came the complaints. What happened to the Lord? I thought he was going to show him who's boss, but he actually ended up teaching him for real. How can you not count this round? You still call this gambling? If this doesn't count, then when will it count? Looks like the Lord is really in a good mood today. Hua Chang raised his left brow and immediately the croupier, standing by the side, shushed the crowd. Everyone, please quiet down. In the blink of an eye, the hall had quieted down again. Although no one dared to speak, their stares intensified. Hua Chang chuckled and softly whispered words of encouragement into Shirlian's ear. Why don't you try again? It might be because there were too many ghosts, demons, humans alike, packed into this gambling den, that somehow Shirlian felt his face starting to heat up. Okay, he responded. Rattle, rattle, he shook twice more. This time, when he revealed the cup, it was two fours. Hua Chang mused, see, isn't it a little higher this time? Although he felt that something was off, Shirlian still nodded his head. Yes, it's a little higher. Hua Chang encouraged, you did well, keep going. With one compliment after another, there were giggles heard in all directions of the hall. Judging by the sound, it seemed as if they all came from female ghosts. Shirlian couldn't figure out himself just which posture was the correct one. In the beginning, he paid close attention to studying how Hua Chang positioned his hands, how he managed the pace, and how he grasped the cup. But now, he was letting Hua Chang's hand lead him and shook blindly. While shaking, a thought came to him. What if Sun Lang is just playing around with me? Lang Chan Cho, who had been watching from above, probably felt the same and couldn't hold it in anymore. You, stop shaking the cup. He's obviously playing you. There's no such thing as a correct posture. He must have cheated. Hearing that boisterous loud voice, Shu Ching Xuan covered his face in second-hand embarrassment. Mumbles and muttering grew louder amongst the crowd, and a rain of dice was thrown at Lang Chan Cho. Stupid bastard, shut up. So noisy, we're just getting to the exciting part. Through our Lord's teaching, that cultivator has gotten outcomes higher and higher, one after another. That's the undeniable truth. That's right. What do you know? Lang Chan Cho fumed. You, you're practically lying through your teeth. He suddenly stopped in mid-speech and his face turned bright red. It turns out a couple of female ghosts below him had roughly yanked on his dangling waistband and scolded. If you keep on causing a ruckus and spouting nonsense, Jia Jia will pull off your pants. Lang Chan Cho had never been threatened like this before, and his anger had made him speechless. You, you, he shouted. 
he could take being beaten by a band of ghosts, but if they were to pull off his pants, then with his martial god status, that would be exceedingly embarrassing. Thus, Lang Chan Cho didn't dare to say much more. Shirlian looked up and saw the other god sending him eye signals. It was funny and pitiful at the same time. He could only lower his head and look at Hua Chang. He said in a small voice, Sun Lang. Hearing the tone of his voice, Hua Chang chuckled. Leave him be. Let us continue. Shirlian gave up and once again held the cup and shook twice. As expected, this time he got two fives. Seeing the results, the crowd became even livelier and continued to tease Lang Chan Cho. Do you see that? It's higher than the last. But Shirlian had already realized that Hua Chang was just fooling around with him and didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. There was no such thing as a correct posture. When it came to him, any posture was wrong. From here on, he might as well give up on any hope of changing his luck. But just as he was about to expose himself on the last shake, Hua Chang stopped him. Wait. Shirlian could feel the hands covering his, pressing down harder, and stopped his movement altogether. What's wrong? he asked. With an unreadable expression, Hua Chang said, this Gurga, you didn't say what would happen if you were to lose. Hearing him call Shirlian Gurga, Shu Ching Xuan and Lang Chan Cho both wore a complicated expression on their faces. The crowd of ghosts also felt massive shivers run down their spines, and there were even a few that fainted on the spot. It was a little embarrassing to say. But because he was in a hurry before, Shirlian hadn't thought about what to bet on. Um, he had thought of also betting 10 years of his life. But a heavenly official's lifespan was quite long, so 10 years wasn't really worth much. Money and treasure, he didn't have any. Spiritual power, he didn't have much of that either. A good amount of time had passed but Shirlian still couldn't think of anything to bet on, so he could only turn and ask the owner of the gambling den. Do you think that there's anything on me that's worth betting on? Hua Chang chuckled at his question. Anything is fine. What have you got on you? Shirlian pondered for a little while and lightly coughed. He might as well be honest about it. I, I only have a half-eaten bun with me. Hua Chang burst out laughing. Even though he laughed, no one else dared to do the same, even if they wanted to. When he finally settled down, Hua Chang nodded. That's fine, a bun will do. Hearing the agreement, not only were the crowd of ghosts shocked, but the croupiers at the gambling table Two. Ever since the opening of this gambling den, there had been innumerable absurd bets made. Organs, life, emotions, spiritual powers. But none were a match to the one today. A half-eaten bun. Even Lang Chan Cho couldn't contain his surprise. What's the meaning of this? Are you saying that I'm only worth a half-eaten bun? The crowd snickered. Someone called out. What's wrong with the bun? You already have it easy, so hurry up and shut your mouth. Shirlian could tell that this defeated voice belonged to Shi Ching Xuan, who was hiding amongst the crowd of ghosts and demons. With the face full of smiles, Hua Chang said, Come, it's the last round. Don't be nervous, Shirlian argued, I'm not nervous. The two maintained that hand-to-hand -hand posture, 
and shook a few times. Even though Shirlian wasn't really nervous, there was a light sheen of sweat on the hand that was sandwiched between the cup and Hua Chang's hands. Finally, the movement came to a stop. He held his breath for the final reveal. The two dice were two sixes. Shirlian let out a sigh of relief and looked up at Hua Chang. Hua Chang quirked his brows. Oh, I lost. Even though he admitted his loss in a serious manner, he didn't sound the least bit sincere. The crowd below was engulfed in silence. Before, there were still people complaining. If this round doesn't count, then when will it count? But now, the answer was clear. It counts when that person wins. This much generosity was almost insane. Even so, no one would dare to comment. The croupier from before raised up the black wooden gambling cup. Congratulations to this young master. You've won this round. Everyone all politely praised. The Lord showed us a perfect loss. Beautiful. Isn't the winner taught by the Lord? He won because the Lord taught him well. That's right. Learning the correct dice rolling posture today has really broadened my horizons. With such an immense amount of knowledge, even 10 years won't be enough to master it. Hua Chang was still watching Shirlian with a grin on his face. Not shifting his gaze, he raised his arm and with a flick of hand, Lang Chan Cho dropped like a rock. Shirlin winced at the loud crash. Shu Ching Xuan couldn't risk exposing himself by rushing forward. So instead, Shirlin went to check up on the prince. Are you okay? Lang Chan Cho got up on his feet and dusted himself off. I'm good. Thank you. He probably wanted you to go up so that he could cheat and make you lose. But thank goodness you won. Shirlian thought, you're completely mistaken. If he didn't go easy on me, even if the world had turned to ashes, I would still not be able to win you back. As he was thinking these thoughts, the tinkling of bells was heard and the sound was followed by gasps of shock that came from all directions. Shirlian turned around and saw that Hua Chang had finally stepped out from behind the red silk screen curtains. In his previous form, Hua Chang had always sported a slightly crooked ponytail. But now, loose raven locks covered vibrant red clothing and an aura of demonic energy radiated from the handsome figure. Only the thin braid tied with a red coral bead brought a hint of mischief to the mix. The van braces were silver. The straps on his boots were silver. The waistband was also silver. Even the long, smoothly curved scimitar that hung at his waist was silver. Just like how the blade was slender and long. The person himself was also slender and tall. He was leaning against the curtains that had been parted, with crossed arms and an unreadable expression. Gurgur, you've won against me. Shirlian obviously knew what had taken place and said woefully, Please stop teasing me. Hua Chang raised his brow. I'm not. Why would I? Down below, the crowd of ghosts were bustling with excitement. As wild as the waves rolling in the sea, they whispered amongst themselves. Has the Lord changed his skin today? I'm dying. His new skin is killing me. It's so tender and firm. Dying, you old hag. Aren't you already dead? It seemed that, because Hua Chang never showed his true form in front of anyone and switched skins fairly frequently. Even the band of ghosts 
in the ghost city didn't know what he looked like and assumed that this must be another one of his fake skins. Only Shirlian knew that the one standing in front of him was the real Crimson Rain sword flower of legend.